Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. My name is Elijah, aka Haji Osaunak, aka Nerd Lost Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American released live action video game film adaptation. And oh boy, do we have an interesting one today as we're reviewing 2002's Resident Evil. Will this one breathe life into the franchise or be dead on arrival? Let's find out. You ready, Pids? Ciao! Let's do this! You got it, Pids. Alright, so Resident Evil was released in theaters on March 15, 2002. Up to this point, seven games had been released in the series. Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Resident Evil Survivor, Resident Evil Code Veronica, Resident Evil Survivor 2 Code Veronica, and Resident Evil Gaiden. We're going to ignore everything other than Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2 as the film borrowed from those games during its creation. Borrowed? Ah, uh, no. Oh, chit -futter. Yeah, Pitts, this isn't sounding good. Let's see if the plots match up here. So, the game Resident Evil involves the town of Raccoon City and its police department investigating some murders that have been happening on the outskirts of town. They send in their Bravo team from the Special Forces Unit Stars to investigate. Upon losing contact with them, they send in an Alpha team to see what happened. The team ends up being attacked by zombie dogs and flees for a nearby mansion. Now, Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine from Stars they discover during the course of the game's events that a company called the Umbrella Corporation has been performing biomedical experiments within a secret lab that's located beneath the mansion and Raccoon City and they're using a biological agent called the T-Virus. Now this virus is highly contagious and once a living creature is infected, upon death it becomes reanimated into a flesh-eating zombie. There are some variations and additional mutations that can happen depending on the creature that is infected. And Chris and Jill, they're gonna fight their way through this game and try to stop Umbrella from continuing their dangerous experiments. Resident Evil 2 picks up two months after the events of Resident Evil. Raccoon City has now been overtaken by the T-Virus, and almost all of its citizens have been turned into zombies. Our protagonists here are Leon S. Kennedy, an RPD officer on his first day of duty, and Claire Redfield, sister to Chris Redfield from the first game who's trying to find out what happened to her brother. Umbrella has developed a new biological agent called the G-Virus, which can mutate humans into bioweapons that constantly evolve and become stronger and more resilient. Along the way, Leon and Claire, they run into a tyrant. It's a powerful monster sent by Umbrella to recover the G-Virus. Sherry Birkin, daughter of William Birkin, who created the G-Virus. And Ada Wong, who may have been sent by an unknown group to steal the G-Virus. Together, Leon and Claire work together to once again stop Umbrella and the deadly virus they've created. Now, the film's plot that involves being centered around a viral outbreak within Umbrella's secret underground lab called The Hive, and it's located below Raccoon City and a mansion that's located on the outskirts of it. A mysterious person steals the T-Virus and its cure and unleashes the T-Virus within the lab during their escape. Umbrella sends a special forces team to the city that invades the mansion and discovers Alice, a woman who recently regained consciousness and is suffering from amnesia, along with a man named Matt who's recently transferred to the RPD. They detain them and then they take them to a secret tunnel that houses a train that leads down to the underground lab. There, they discover an amnesiac man named Spence. We learn along the way that the Special Forces team has been sent in to discover what has happened within the lab and also neutralize the computer AI called the Red Queen that monitors and runs the lab and had locked it down upon detecting the T-Virus outbreak. Together, the group has to fight for survival and attempts to escape while trying to unravel the mystery of Alice, Spence, and who unleashed the T-Virus. Well, here I have to say that this plot, it doesn't at all match up directly with either of the games. Yes, there are some similarities here due to borrowing from the games, but extreme liberties have been taken here, making the plot pretty much entirely original and almost entirely unlike the games. Other than adopting the evil corporation is working on unethical biological experiments in a secret lab that creates zombies plot point, there's no heavy direct correlation to the games. This plot is basically interchangeable with every other zombie movie you've ever seen. So this one gets a chip futter for me. 
Hids, your thoughts on the plot? Chit factor. So do we at least get some good representation of the Resident Evil games? Well, we basically get none of the main characters from the games. Do we get zombies? Sure. Uh, are they created by a biological agent called the T-Virus? Yeah. Uh, is the evil corporation that created the virus called Umbrella? Yeah, sure. Uh, do we see any of the other monsters from the Resident Evil games? Yes, we get the zombie dogs. We also see one liquor. But honestly, if you remove the mentions of Umbrella, the T-Virus, the zombie dogs, the briefly seen mansion, and the train that are nods to Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2 respectively, this would be any other generic zombie movie that you've seen before. There's really nothing else to distinguish it from your typical zombie movie and link it heavily to the Resident Evil games. So I gotta give it a chit fucker. Pids? Lazier than a shambling zombie chit fucker. Characters here. Let's keep this brief and focus just on the film's main characters, especially since there is basically zero representation of the main characters from the games. James Shea, leader of the Special Forces team sent in by Umbrella and played by Colin Salmon, known for his role in the Pierce Brosnan era Bond films as the Deputy Chief of Staff at MI6 and also more recently as General Zod in the sci fi series Krypton. He, along with the other Special Forces members, looked the part when fully outfitted in gear, resembling Hunk from Resident Evil 2. His portrayal is of a strong leader who looks out for his team and is dedicated to ensuring the success of the mission. Even though this is an original character, due to the look and the portrayal, I think he fits into the Resident Evil universe. Pids, what did you think of him? A oh, woo! Chad Kaplan played by Martin Cruz. Now, Cruz is mostly known for his theater roles, and to the best of my knowledge, this appears to be his only major film role. Uh, he plays the Special Forces technician that handles the hacking of the Hive systems, as well as attempting to shut down the Red Queen. It's a believable portrayal that, along with his look, allows me to, again, at least give this character a pass. Uh, Pids, your feelings on Kaplan? Oh, woo! Spence Parks played by James Purefoy. Known for his roles in the HBO series Rome, the film Solomon Kane, and more recently the Netflix series Altered Carbon. He's the other amnesiac whose origins and intentions remain a mystery to everyone. The performance is good, and he is believable as the random, mysterious person who shows up as a trope during most Resident Evil games. Again, even though an original character, I can give this a pass. Pids, where are you at with Spence? Oh, woo! Matthew Addison, played by Eric Mabius, known for his roles in the ABC comedy Ugly Betty and the Showtime series The L Word. He's the brother of a scientist that worked for Umbrella in the Hive, who's investigating what happened to them. Again, we have another strong performance as a random character who shows up in the Resident Evil universe trying to find out what happened to a loved one. Another pass here for me as well with this. Uh, Pids, how'd Matt work for you? Oh, woo! Rain Ocampo, played by Michelle Rodriguez of every damn Fast and the Furious movie ever made. <laughs> She's the strong, take no names, kick-ass female member of the Umbrella Special Forces unit. She's honestly one of the best parts of this film and probably my favorite character in it. The portrayal is excellent and I give her a strong ho-woo from me. Pids, did you like Rain? Ho-woo! Alice. Played by Mila Jovovich of the Fifth Element fame, as well as every single Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil film. She is our other mysterious amnesiac whose origins and intentions are unknown. We have a good performance here that ends up ramping up with some surprising action from her. And I can't really find too much to fault with her other than I found the character portrayal of Rain to be much stronger than hers. Yet she still fits in the universe good enough to get a pass. Pids? Ha woo! So what's our final verdict here? I'm gonna hand this off to the pits first. Lazy chit fighter, but him's a decent zombie movie. Totally agree. As mentioned before, if you remove the very few borrowed elements from the Resident Evil games, this movie is indistinguishable from any other slightly above average zombie movie. As a film adaptation of the Resident Evil games, it's a straight chit fighter but it is entertaining enough overall to be an above average zombie movie. At most, I can give this a 60s out of 10s. There's no need to rush out and see this unless you are either a diehard Resident Evil fan or perhaps a fan of Michelle Rodriguez or Mila Jovovich and want to see one of their earlier movies that you haven't seen yet. 
as it stands, I don't have much hope for, and I'm really not looking forward to watching the sequels to this thing. Thank you all again for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. I'm Elijah, aka Haji Osana, aka Nerd Lust Daddy, reminding you all to not be chit fuckers to each other. Body autonomy for all, reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Take us out, Piggles. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>